Did you know that Agatha all along is supposed to have nine episodes? I repeat, nine episodes. Are they insane? Last one there is a nice person. Well, this sucks. Greetings, fellow mortals. Just a reminder, saying it's just my opinion is for cowards. Normally, I do a spoiler warning, but there's not a whole lot to spoil. The main character, Agatha, wakes up from a spell that she's been under for three years after WandaVision, and she has to go recruit a bunch of people in order to get her powers back. That's it, two episodes worth of content crammed into one paragraph that isn't long enough to please the basic English teacher. Okay, I did leave out that there was a song, but besides that, you could go into episode 3 with my description and it wouldn't be lost at all. That, the fact that they're going to drag out 6 episodes worth of story into 9 episodes, and the sheer post-production hell that this show has experienced has not filled me with confidence. The show has gone through so many different name changes that it's clear that it's struggling to find its identity even after it's been made. Who are you? And what do you want? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. If I had to give it a description, I would say that it's WandaVision meets The Wizard of Oz meets Wednesday. And if that sounds like your cup of tea, then I'm happy for you. But this definitely is not for me. I am not going to be watching episode 3 because it just kind of bores me. It definitely has a sense of YA fiction focused on a female demographic. There's a reason I didn't like the Wednesday show or the Miss Marvel show. They did not care about meeting any of my interests whatsoever, which is fine. It doesn't mean that they're bad. It means that it's not for me, which is why I'm not going to be watching Agatha all along because I don't particularly like it. But it does make me wonder who this is for. It is a very slow paced, young adult centered story with a female demographic and a bunch of MCU stink all around it. All the while being very clean and aromantic, meaning it's probably not something that teenage girls would want to watch. It reminds me of the question I had when She-Hulk came out. Who is the target audience? She-Hulk was Sex in the City meets comic book stuff. And guess what? The target audience of both of those things cancel each other out. Hashtag not all. There is about 5% of the population that would be interested in both. But guess what? That's not enough to sustain a show. And I know that because She-Hulk got canceled. Well, that's the end of me. And considering how Disney kind of just kicked Agatha all along out the door, I don't think they have high hopes for this one. I mean, yeah, the Rotten Tomato score is actually good, but I think the fact that trolls aren't willing to downvote the show at all is kind of a problem. The death of art is apathy, and it feels like everyone's very apathetic. They can't even bring themselves to hate Agatha all along. I got curious and went to sail the high seas for a bit and I could not find the show at all. Can you comprehend how little people have to care in order for something not to be able to be pirated in the year of our Lord 2024? Yeah, there's not going to be a season two. In fact, I bet Disney is going to erase this altogether and pretty much pretend like it never happened. And if Disney didn't have its own streaming service, I doubt Agatha all along would have seen the light of day at all. One of the first things that you have to learn in any business is the sunk cost fallacy. This is the tendency for people to be reluctant to change courses after being dedicated to something for so long. They do not want their time, their money, and their effort to be wasted. For example, you're at a slot machine in a casino. You're halfway through your money, but you keep going because eventually you gotta get a payout from it. But then you lose all of your money and go home sad. Or you've been in a relationship for five years and both of you are miserable. Instead of gaining out, you decide to go all in because you don't want your time and your effort to be wasted, meaning you're going to get married or God forbid you're going to bring a kid into that mess. Or you've been a fan of something for a very long time. The direction has changed or the quality has dipped, but 
you are not willing to abandon the fandom because you don't want to feel like your time has been wasted. So you continue to consume a product that you absolutely despise. A lot of individuals have a problem with the sunk cost fallacy, but corpos don't because the sunk cost fallacy gets in the way of their bottom line. They'll even throw a cause that they previously supported under the bus. This is your reminder that corpos do not care about your cause whatsoever, especially if it gets in the way of them making money. There's a reason why LGBT plus content is always censored in specific countries. That depends. How much money are we talking about? Mr. Krabs! 62 cents. I take the money. Mr. Krabs! Considering how big of a pain in the ass that Agatha all along has been for Disney, there has to be a reason why they didn't toss it in the trash can. It's probably because future projects reference the show and it would hurt them in the future if they just tossed it away. So they would have lost more money by burning it rather than tossing it onto Disney Plus without a care in the world. But I can assure you as they renamed the show 50 different times because they knew it was going to crash and burn, someone brought up the idea of just pulling a Batgirl. If you don't remember, Warner Brothers Discovery just deleted an entire Batgirl movie in order to get a tax write-off. The Corpos looked at the film and thought, hey, if we put this out in theaters, we're going to lose a lot of money. Not only that, if we put it out on HBO Max, we're still going to lose a lot of money. So into the trash can it went. There is no way to watch this movie at all. As far as I know it is completely deleted and it makes you wonder how bad the movie had to have been for blind corpos to look at it, see the truth of how terrible this was and just decide, eh, we would save more money just with a tax write-off. Oh, I forgot. You're broken. I don't want to play with you anymore. Now that is the sunk cost fallacy in motion. In terms of business, if this saved them money, it was smart. But in terms of being creative, it really just pains me. Because even if something is laughably bad, I want it to exist because I want to laugh at it. Seriously, I would kill to see how bad that Batgirl movie actually was. Which could have been the plan all along, making the Batgirl movie a thing of legends. So when eventually it does come out on Max, that people just have to watch because they know it's going to be a giant show. That is if the movie isn't completely deleted. Who knows, maybe there's a saved copy out there somewhere. Disney could have done something similar with Agatha all along, saying that they're going to delete the show, but then ride the wave of backlash as a promotion tactic. But nope, they've just decided to throw it out there to be forgotten in a few months. It's probably because Deadpool and Wolverine did so well financially that they're just deciding, hey, we need to course correct and do something different. At this point, the Corpos want to just move past the next Avengers movie so they can do something different. Because they don't even have the hate mob anymore. Do you know how bad things have to be to make people so apathetic that they can't even bring themselves to hate you? Yeah. Get it. You can wrestle with Bappy yourself, Monty. I'm going to get some Rocky Road. In my real life experience, I have not met a person that's excited for this show. In fact, half of the people that I bring it up to don't even know that it exists. I think the apathy is a very interesting topic to talk about because it basically means that something is at the end of its life cycle. Not to say that the MCU or comic book movies in general are just going to disappear or anything, but they are going to change a bit. They're probably going to have to scale back a bit, play it a bit more safe, and target the male demographic because they're not going to be making the same amount of money anymore. The next big thing is going to be turning video games into movies and TV shows. It's why so many different projects are being made right now. Which is a bit ironic because AAA video games are struggling hard right now. But watch closely as Grandpa topples an empire by changing a one to a zero. I'm a gentleman! There's a solution here you're not seeing. Honestly, it makes me wonder what would have happened if Agatha all along was deleted before it came out. Would there have been a giant outcry like with Batgirl? Or would everyone just collectively shrug and just not care? 
because right now Agatha all along is at the bottom of the totem pole. And do you know how mediocre and bad something has to be for it to be lower than Hawkeye? Because even if the show was deleted, it'd be a lot more memorable than what we have now because I am struggling to remember what happened in those first two episodes. It was so bland. But what do you think? Are you enjoying Agatha all along? Do you want it to go the way of Batgirl? Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And remember, if you disagree with all of this, that's fine. After all, everyone is entitled to their objectively wrong opinion. This is worthless. It's less than worthless, my boy. Thank you all so much for watching. You're still here? Good night, everybody. Thank you. You bye. Boom. Do not despair.